Hello everybody, in this video I want to address some questions that I have been receiving recently about how I manage my covered calls. What strike prices do I choose? What do I do when the stock price goes higher than the strike price, etc, etc. So I will try to address some of those questions in this video. So I want to start off by saying that there is no one size fits all solution. I don't treat every situation the same way. For example, I wouldn't look at Amazon the same way I would look at uh, Funko Pops or uh, PayPal. I wouldn't look at Nvidia the same way I look at uh, Realty Income, things like that, right? So every company, I look at it as a separate situation. I don't do the same strategy for every single company I see. So for example, if we take a look at Amazon specifically, that's a company I plan to own long term. So when starting out, I try to pick a strike price that's above the current price. So for right now, Amazon is at $185.67. So I chose a strike price of 200, which is above that. And usually I try to target a strike price to where it's higher to the point where if it actually does reach that price, if Amazon actually does reach $200, I'm going to make some pretty good money if that were to happen. But also, I don't want to pick something too high because then I won't be getting much covered call premium. So I want to pick a strike price that's higher than the current price, but also not too high so that I still gain some covered call premium. And then if Amazon were to actually reach that strike price before expiration, then I would probably roll out to a higher strike price and further expiration date in order to keep my shares because I do want to keep my Amazon shares long term. Now, in contrast, if we look at something like PayPal, PayPal is not a stock that I really am desperate to own long term. If the shares get called away, I'm totally okay with that. So that's a completely different situation. Right now, PayPal is at $65.79 and the strike price is at $65. So it's actually not even higher than the current price. On top of that, if PayPal were to hit the strike price, which it already has, I'm actually not going to roll it out. I just leave the strike price where it is. That's because I don't really care if my PayPal shares get called away. If they get called away, I collect my premium and then I use that money that is now freed up on something else. And if we take into account dividend paying stocks, such as Verizon, I have to take into account the dividend that it pays out on top of the covered call premium that I want to collect. So for example, Verizon has a dividend yield of 6.81% according to Robinhood. So when choosing a strike price for a Verizon covered call, I would have to take into account how much money I would be making from the covered call premium, as well as how much money I would be making from the dividend yield as well. So I have to take a look at the ex dividend dates and things like that. For the stocks that I do want to keep long term, how far above the current price do I choose for the strike price? It also varies because for example, something very stable that doesn't move very much like Disney, I'm not going to pick the strike price for my Disney covered calls the same way I would pick my strike prices for my SoFi covered calls. SoFi has been known to make wild swings in either direction, so I tend to choose strike prices for SoFi that's well above the current price. But yeah, as you can see, there's many different scenarios where I would do different things, and of course, Things can change over time, news can come out about a company, so I have to stay up to date on what's happening with the company as well, and then adjust my positions accordingly. So as you can see, unfortunately, there's no one size fits all situation. Every position is different, every stock is different, every company is different, so I treat them all in their own unique situation. I'm sorry if you were expecting an answer like, oh, I trade my cover calls this way, or I this is how I pick my strike prices, but unfortunately, everything is different. I treat every one of my positions as their own unique case. 
Now, if you were to ask me what strike price would I choose for a specific stock, then I could better answer that type of question. However, there's no general option strategy for my covered calls because I treat all of my positions as their own unique case-by-case -case basis. I hope this video answered some of your questions and helped you gain a better understanding of how I manage my covered calls. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you. Bye.